Okay, Gary, uh, what we're doing here is we're checking the gap on the uh, top ring. You square it up in the bore with the piston. Check the gap. And then we take it over to the gapper here. Deburr the edges. Measure it again. What's the gap supposed to be on that, Gary? Twenty one on this. The ring. That's the second ring? That's the second ring. And the first ring typically it'll have a smaller gap, right? We set the top ring at about 19 and the second ring at about 21 to 22. Got it. Okay, Gary, tell, me, tell us what we're going to do now. Okay, we're, we're going to assemble a piston to a rod and then install that assembly into the engine. and. The rods have all been cleaned and, and sized, and the pistons have been checked for size and cleaned. And since they're full floating, the piston is pin is retained by by a snap ring, and the, the snap rings hold it hold the pin in. And we lube the the pin with a Torco lubricant made just for piston pins. And uh, we want to make sure that all of our surfaces are liberally coated with Torco. And the pin is centered on these pistons. Some pistons the pin is offset so it has to go a certain direction. On these it can go either direction and I always turn, like to turn them all the same direction so that it just seems to look better that way no particular reason it's good practice you don't get out of a step in. okay Gary this is a little bit uh, tricky because these are uh, so called spiral locks a little different than just a snap ring they're, they're a little more difficult to put in and they're really difficult to get out but they never come out by themselves there's no danger of them accidentally coming out. So you spread it a little bit to get it started and then you kind of uh, uh, go around the circle there pushing it in place. You just kind of spiral it in to the groove and and you always want to check and make sure that you didn't forget one and leave one out. Then we're ready for the rod bearings to go into the the cap and there again we've we've measured the rod bearings with our ball mic to make sure they're they're all the right size. And we work the rod bearing down into the rod, into the cap. Make sure they're seated in there well. Then we're ready for the piston rings. And the, uh, the oil ring is a three-piece perfect circle type piston ring. I'm sure made by Dana. These particular rings, it's hard to say, they is uh, supposedly made by a company in Australia, but they're the millimeter pack here for the Ross Pistons. We stagger the end gaps, and there again, we've already gapped the rings to the proper, proper end gaps, which we gapped the second ring to 21 thousandths, and we gapped the top ring to 18 to 19 thousandths. And you, when you put the rings on the pistons, you want to stretch them as little as absolutely possible to keep from deforming them. 
some people like to use a ring compressor and on some rings, I mean a ring expander, and on some you, you have to use that. And I prefer on most of them just to slip them over. And then you always want to check and make sure the rings go completely below the level of the piston, outside of the piston, and that they're a, a, a good fit in the, in the piston. And then we're ready to install that in the engine. And uh, we lube, again, our bearing lube on the bearing surface. And the, the bolts, I have lubed those already with with Molly lube to there again to get the correct torque. And the ring compressor will be the next step and then we we lube the rings with a ring assembly lube which is a, a real lightweight non-detergent non-additive type oil which gives it a lubrication but not enough to keep the rings from seating in. And we want to coat the skirts also so the skirts don't scuff initially. And there again make sure the rings are lined up the way you want and take one last look at the to make sure the the locks are in. And then we're ready to install in the, in the engine. Now each one of those, you've numbered those rods to begin with, right? Right. Gary? And we've, we've numbered them to the cylinder that they go in so that uh, when, we, when we're assembling it, we get... Actually, the rod and piston assembly can go anywhere in, in this application, but we always number it so when the engine's taken apart, you know which cylinder it came Right. It's, it's not important in this one, mm -hmm. but... If it, if this were a stock Ford, it would the numbers you'd always have them facing toward the outside. Right, correct. And the piston, if it had little arrows on it, you'd put <laughs> the arrows going the, the or arrows forward. Arrows be pointing forward, correct. Okay, now a little there's a little trick here in that uh, we have the relief, we have a cutaway part of the cylinder there, so we don't have a totally round surface to. Uh, which makes it a little more difficult to get the rings past that relief area and into the bore. Sometimes they slip right in and sometimes it takes the aid of a screwdriver. And if you did enough of them the same bolt, or the same size, I guess you'd use a, just a, a, a cylinder that's cut for the right size. Right. Oh, we looked out, that one went right through. And if it hadn't, we'd have maybe had to coax it with a, our finger or a, a non-abrasive. We make sure that, that it seats completely against the crankshaft. You want to be really careful not to bang the crankshaft with the edge of the rod. On the stock Ford rods, of course, the uh, bolts are built into the top of the rod, and we put a uh, maybe a piece of rubber hose or something to keep them from uh, uh, hitting the journals on the crankshaft. And we always want to make sure that the rod slides back and forth on there, which tells you that the fit is as it should be. So we're on this particular engine, we have two thousandths rod bearing clearance. And with two thousandths clearance, you, you don't have any room for any misalignment. As a, an example of 
piece of notebook paper is three thousandths thick, and if you just took a little piece of notebook paper and put behind the rod bearing, it would lock it up. And we torqued these. Isn't that the what the stock car guys, guys did, didn't they? <laughs> put a shimmin back in the very yeah. not recommended print. We torqued them to forty-five pounds with the Molly Lube. And there again, make sure the, the rod moves freely on the crank. So one down, seven to go. All righty. When we put this last piston in here, one of the things I wanted to point out that makes it a little easier to get the ring to go over that uh, where the uh, relief is, this, this uh, corner is rounded or chamfered or radius, however you want to put it. And that also has a functional thing when the engine's running, it keeps it from becoming a hot spot, which it would be. Okay, let's go ahead and slide that in. Alright, then we'll turn the engine over and we'll tighten this one so you can see it from the bottom this time. Now, here Gary is bringing that last one into place there. Again, being careful uh, to center it on the throw there so it doesn't mark up the bearing. Put the other half in place. Again, these are different than the stock Ford rods, which would have the threaded uh, bolt built into the upper half of the rod. You know, that's one thing that always amazed me that looks so Mickey Mouse, but you never saw a failure with those stud built into the rod and what always I always thought was a marvel was how they threaded those and everything being part of the rod there yeah I'd love to see the manufacturing process there of course you always have a perfect fit on that end there we have great the, I got the bottom number, end but number but, yeah. eight in there and before I put the pan on I always like to go back and double check, make sure that all the rods are tight. That so way I don't wake up in the middle of the night wondering if maybe I forgot one. Missed one, right. What about the mains? Do you worry about those? Oh no, they can come <laughs> off. It doesn't hurt anything. I've already double checked the mains. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I've never been sorry I double checked something. No. I think coming over here, I uh, was trying to remember if I closed the garage door. Okay, did I miss any? I don't know, you went so quick. Looked good to me. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to look at the replay. And there again, it, it's never a bad idea to check to make sure the rods float freely, freely on the crank. And then another funny thing I always like to do is, is look down at the where the, the rod is on the piston. It should be basically centered. It'll usually be off a little to one side, but the rod would be basically centered in the pin. If right. it's way off to one side, that Some, probably means you got wrong. rod in backwards. Okay, what's next, Gary? The, see the oil pump in the pan? Well, at this point, we're ready for the oil pump and the pan and, and the seals will, will seal here. And uh, there again, it's always a good idea to check. And it's easier to turn it with the wrench, but with the millimeter rings, the tension is so low on them that the rotating uh, force required, you can usually just turn the crank by hand, even with the pistons in there. Great. Okay. Well, we'll pick up when you, we get the... Well, we talked before, there's numbers on one side of the rod and one side of the cap, and they, of course, should be on the same side. And in forward fashion, they'll be on the outside of the rod. 